hello everyone in this video what we are going to see is how to create folders dynamically in blob based upon the incomings files name before continuing on this video i request you to watch these two videos which is of similar scenario if you are new to our channel hit subscribe first let us see the acceptance criteria we are going to copy the files from source to destination in our source we have the files which is having date as its name if you see here the year month and then date so both of the file is having uh, different dates now let's go back to our container and inside our destination how we want to copy these files is first of all year folder should be there month folder and the date folder inside the date folder the respective files should be there so this is our acceptance criteria i have already created the storage account and uh, Azure Data Factory as well. If you don't know how to create one, I'll be providing the URL in the video description. I have deleted all the files from the destination container. Only in source, we have the input file which is having a date as its name. Now let's go to Azure Data Factory and under manage option, I have already created a link to the storage account and directly we will proceed to author. First step is to create a data set for our input container. Just click on new data set and search for blob and click on continue. The input file is in CSV format so I am selecting this. Let me provide a name to the input data set and from the linked service drop down let me select the blob link and here using the browser option I am going to select the input container which is source. I'm not going to uh, select any files and in my file the first row is having the column names so I'm just checking this and for importing the schema I'm going to import from the sample file which is in my local so I'm selecting it let me click on OK It got created let me minimize the properties and if you check in the schema schema is imported properly and we are not going to uh, provide any value or parameterize this part because we are going to use wildcard we will see later what it is now it's time to create a new data set for our output data set so, so do the same step click on continue and output is also in csv format so this is what i want let me provide a name to the output data set and from the linked service drop down select blob link let me browse to select the destination container click on ok and here also i want the column names to be in the first row so i'm just selecting it and i'm going to import the schema as well click on ok let me minimize the property and here we need to parameterize both directory as well as the file name because directory is what we are going to do right uh, the dynamic folders so we need to parameterize this one and the file name as well directly go to parameters and let me add a parameter for both file name and directory dp means data set parameter this is the naming convention which i usually follow I am going to keep both the type as string and I am not going to pass any va default value. We are going to pass this value dynamically. Just directly go to connections. Everything. Yeah. Here, just click on file name. Let me add the parameter which we have created. And similarly for directory as well. So this is the parameter which we have created for directory. And click on OK. And just remember we didn't parameterize uh, anything for input data set we have parameterized only for the output data set now let me publish now let us move to create pipelines i'm going to create a new pipeline for our activity if you want to rename you can do so from here i'm going to minimize the properties the first task is to read whatever the files available inside the source container so i just want to 
get these names right so in order to do it just go here and search for get drag and drop and here under settings select the input container because we want to read the source right so select the input container and here if you see field list so which property we want to get because metadata means everything right file size name everything so which property you need we need to read the child item so child item mean what are the files available inside this so child child item we need to select if you want to see the last modified you can do so from here i'm selecting child items let me run as of now to see what is happening i just want the output here yeah, try and find here let me see the output so this is the output let me copy to a notepad let me paste it here and here if you see under child items we are having each file with name and type in an array right so this child item is array and we have our individual uh, files over here along with type and name so now we need to iterate each of the item inside this child items so not to do it go for for each just drag and drop i want this activity to be executed after uh, get metadata so just click on on success and drag and drop now it's time to set the settings for for each just click on it and go to settings tab here we need to specify based upon what we need to iterate this for each i'm going to add a dynamic content just click on add dynamic content and here if you see list of subfolders and file child items is there right just select this and you are able to see output dot child items which means it will pick up the first one for the first iteration and the second one for the second iteration iteration so this is how it will pick up so just click on okay now we need to add copy activity inside this for each in order to do it just double click activities and here search for copy it is already here so i'm going to drag and drop currently we are in for each inside for each under source select the input data set and here it is asking file path type we have already covered all these type in a separate video i'll be providing the url in the description please do watch i'm going to select wild wildcard file path because we didn't specify which file it is specifically so I'm, I'm selecting this and here what we are going to do we are going to pick up the file name from here right so for anyway for each will be having this content right so i'm going to pick up this particular name from here so how to do it just click on add dynamic content i need for each current item for the particular iteration what is that so item will be there inside item what i need inside this i need the name alone i don't want type and all right i just need that name so just copy this or you can directly type over there dot name just click on ok and that's it now let's go to sync sync means destination i'm going to select the output data set now first let me parameter is the file name so whatever we did for source right same uh, same file name we want uh, in our output so i'm just adding a dynamic content i'm going to do the exactly same item and click on ok now we need to parameterize this directory but this is a critical area based upon this only the dynamic folders will be created just click on add dynamic content and inside here if i put as name what you will be getting you will be getting the file name this part right but i don't want this let me put everything in a new notepad let me paste over here what this expression will return is 
a file name something like this right so this is what it will return but how my directory should be there it should be like 2022 followed by backslash and then month part backslash and then the date part so this is how it should be right there right so what we need to do we need to extract the year part month part from here and we need to add the black slash right so how to do it first of all let's concentrate on year part alone just put it as i'm adding up here so how to get this here we have option in the dynamic part which is go to functions under string you will have something called a substring yeah so we have explained this in detail in our last video let me copy it let me paste over here so with substring option we can extract these values let me put the index part first so that you can easily understand this is index it will start from zero and it will go something like this now we need to extract the year part alone from here right in order to do it so this expression will be returning this value let me copy this without art because for a nested expression only one art should be there at the start comma what is the starting index you want to start from so my starting index is zero and how many characters do we need actually it is a four characters right from zeroth index it is a four just put so this will return the year part which is 2022 now ignore about black slash we will see at the end now it's month part right so 12 how to extract 12 from this one i'm going to copy the same item just i'm going to change the index and length that's it so here what is the index starting index for the month part just match up with here right okay so for month part it is starting with five let me put it as five and how many characters are there for month part we know it's two so this will return 12 now it's the date part for date part i'm going to copy the same paste it what is the starting index for date part for date part starting index is 8 this is going to be same for all the files right so shouldn't be issue and the number of characters is 2 now we need to add everything and we need to append this uh, black slash in the middle right so how to do that we have a string function which is called as concat so what does it do it will combine a number of strings so just copy it here let's copy paste the first one the year part comma i need a black slash in the middle so i'm putting black slash in single quotes and put one more comma now the month part just remember ignore that part at the starting only we should have only one at the beginning so let me paste and here as well i need one more uh, black slash in the middle right i'm going to put it in single quotes comma and the date part and that's it this is our final expression just copy and run if you have any error it will show a red dot at the end but there is no error our expression looks good just click on ok now it's time to test our flow just go back here and run it got completed let me scroll in the output here get meta data activity will return the subset of these child items right we already see this and for for each the input is going to be two items those two child item and here if you see the copy activity ran twice one for 
file one and the file name is here and for the second file now let's go to our destination container to cross verify the year part followed by month part and inside that we have the date part where the respective files are being placed and that's it follow me on linkedin to stay connected if you have any scenarios something like this ping me on linkedin i will try my best to make a video on it but it will take some time to produce a video thank you for watching bye bye